Welcome to Two Cents Short of a Dollar, the show where we give our two cents and keep it 100. We're your host, that's Motiz, and I'm Rue, Ryan Garcia. I don't want to say shocked the world because, you know, like, remember I was saying, I think this is going to be a closer fight than people think. So I don't think it was some landslide of an upset, but Ryan Garcia has the world on fire right now. So I know you saw the fight. Tell me what you thought instantly. Just about Ryan's performance, about the scorecards, about about the refereeing from Harvey Doc. Yeah, it it was crazy. Actually, I I, I probably want to say I, I would probably say Ryan did shock the world. I'm gonna be honest. I think although people may have probably been like, "Hey, you know, Ryan may," I think the most credit Ryan has gotten, like even you was like, "Yo, it might be a tough fight," but I don't think no one, at least up until that point, I haven't spoken to anyone that said, "Hey." Ryan is definitely going to win this fight, mm-hmm. especially in the fashion of how he won. Right. I, mm-hmm. I didn't speak to not, I didn't see not one person really r- like having Ryan beating Devin Haney. Right. And of course, as you can see with the gambling odds kind of reflected that. Um, I don't think with his antics up to that point or during the press conferences actually helped this case. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's why probably people was like, Oh, you know, what? I'm going to just lean towards Devin. Uh, but nevertheless, I would definitely say Ryan, man, when I tell you, and, and, and I was I was definitely wrong because I had Devin Haney winning, right? Mm-hmm. But, bro, in the fashion of how he was picking Devin Haney apart was, was crazy, right? So he buckles Devin Haney in round one, right? And then Devin Haney comes back. He starts to win a slew of rounds shortly afterwards he, he actually buckles ryan garcia as well he hurts mm-hmm. ryan garcia round, with a round right two hand. ryan admitted to being hurt yeah right he, he buckles ryan so mm-hmm. it, it showed you know Devin haney had the potential to really hurt ryan then it came like okay where's this fight heading and it started falling into Devin haney's favor round seven comes right and ryan drops Devin haney harvey dot deducts a point with no warning <laughs> Right, mm-hmm. he gets three official knockdowns, which is probably more of uh, more like five because mm-hmm. Harvey Doc was allowing Devin Haney to survive, which was very, very frustrating. I can tell they paid off Harvey Doc. Harvey Doc, you can tell instantly that Devin Haney was really supposed to win that fight because it was ridiculous. The excessive holding was mm-hmm. crazy, right? Um, he wasn't he was taking excessively long, allowing Devin Haney to kind of recuperate, but Man, when I tell yeah. you, one thing I was really shocked about was, yes, we know Ryan Garcia is a one-trick pony, but the fact that he still was landing that left hook and he wasn't even setting it up. He only had that one jab to the left hook. That was probably the best left hook he landed in the mm-hmm. fight. But outside of that, he was just landing the left hook, not even setting it up. He would throw a couple flurries here. And Devin... The person that we say has a high IQ in boxing, he did not show that last night, you know. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's my yep. take. So, I I expected a good fight. I did lean Devin Haney as well. One thing, and this proved itself last night as well. One thing I know about Devin Haney is he has, from what I've seen or can recollect, he's not going to be penalized for excessive holding. It's just something the refs are not going to penalize him for. So, like the what, I, what, fight. I, what what I thought Devin Haney could do is. You know, jab, jab, clinch his way to a victory. I, I did. If Devin won, I didn't fall into that narrative of everyone saying a lot of, well, not everyone, but a lot of people saying, "Oh, Devin's gonna stop Ryan." I just could not mm-hmm. see Devin stopping Ryan. One of my friends hit me up and they wanted to bet on it. I said I would not because I cannot see Devin Haney stopping Ryan Garcia. <laughs> you know, you know yeah. what I'm saying. I, I thought Devin would, you know, jab, clinch his way to a win. You know, on on the scorecard. But right out the gate, Ryan lands that left hook. Boom. And that's one thing I said. I said, unlike Tank, who didn't get hit with the left hook, Devin's going to get hit with the left hook. We just have to see how he reacts to it. And I think instantly it became very obvious to the world he can't take that left hook well. Right mm-hmm. out the gate, round one. But like you said, he did He did come back, you know, particularly in the second round. He looked okay, you know, like, all right, he's kind of back, gaining some momentum. But he kept trying to bring the fight to Ryan Garcia, and Ryan Garcia was kind of more of the counterpuncher, which I thought was probably a bad strategy on Devin Haney's part. And then Devin couldn't 
one, Devin's not known as a big puncher, but because Ryan had him hurt so many times, I think he could net his feet. A lot of the fight, his feet wasn't under him, so he couldn't really sit down and generate power on any of those punches. Yeah. Um. You know, like like people said, he he looked strong against Regis. You know, I took no stock in that going into this fight. Yeah, I don't know if I want to call. I don't want to disrespect Ryan. I don't want to call him a one trick pony, but. I, I was very shocked, like you said. He was not setting up the left. He wasn't hiding it. He wasn't at all. He, he wasn't hiding it. What what one thing he did that was smart, you know, and I, I know you mentioned this um, when you called me right after the fight is he wasn't like he wasn't like in the tank fight where he threw three left hooks in a row. He didn't do that this fight. He kind of lulled Devin to sleep a few times doing different mm-hmm. things. Boom! Here go the left hook. You forgot about this, you know. Devin even yeah. said that he was kind of like sleeping on it a bit, which is crazy. But man, <laughs> it was it, it was shocking. It was shocking. And to get into Harvey Doc, I think I think Ryan gets a TKO if Harvey Doc gets out the way. You know, like you said, there mm-hmm. was excessive holding on Devin's part. There were a couple times where Ryan hit him and Devin was holding on to him to stay up, and Devin went down, and Harvey Doc ruled it a slip instead of a knock. I thought that was egregious, like egregious refing. And then it was some unnecessary timeouts and breaks in the action when Devin got back to his feet. So I think he really, really let Devin survive. The only thing I would critique Ryan on, well, not the only thing, but yeah, yeah. The only thing I would critique Ryan on is I would say, man, there's sometimes I thought Devin was still hurt and he kind of just let the round go instead of still jumping on him and getting him out of there. Right. I a hundred percent agree with that. There was moments where, and I'm not, and what I think happened was Ryan's conditioning. I don't think he was fully conditioned. Okay. Okay. I think he started punching himself out and he was just like, hi, right, okay. You know, he's that grabbing me. Let me just try to recuperate for the next round. Because I'm sense. like, jump on him. Like, yeah, get him out of there. Ain't he punching like as if a toddler shot to a punch a grown man? <laughs> like he didn't, he couldn't have no energy. Like he just like, ah, like, you know, yeah. he, it was nothing. Devin could have done at that point. He could have yeah. really, and and the thing is, Ryan, I see that this is why I, I feel like Ryan is not like the most skilled or or smartest fighter. Because if you know a person is hurt and you know they're gonna, you know, leap in for a hug, you anticipate the hug and just throw uppercuts, throw uppercuts and get him out there, frame him. But obviously, like you know, he couldn't do yeah, that. Yeah. I mean, so th- this isn't a critique because strangely this worked, but that shell i don't know if i can refer to it as the philly shell but <laughs> that that the shell defense that ryan was like i i have like i don't know like was that a serious tactic or was ryan or was ryan just so dismissive of devin that ryan was playing in the ring like i really couldn't tell because i feel like he was really turning so far around i just it, it's a tactic unlike i've seen before you know yeah. you know what i mean so i really don't know what to make of that like i said it's not a critique because maybe it worked or or maybe that wasn't the game plan maybe he just didn't execute the philly shell properly i can't really tell but nevertheless there was a point in the fight and i think this was very telling where ryan really really turned he was you know on the shell he's turned and devin got maybe four five body shots in a riot it was like nothing happened bro it was like nothing happened and at that point i'm like david yeah david might get stopped bro because like those are free hits basically yeah those are free hits basically like ryan should have even if he didn't go down ryan should have felt one of those maybe been gasping for air or something but what did you make of ryan's shell defense we can call it the victorville shell if you'd like <laughs> the victorville shell that's hilarious uh, I think he just did it to out of instinct. Like he's just like trying to, you know what? Let me just do this. Like let me just do this because he stone punches. Let me just turn my back. Have the ref Harvey Doc come come in reset. You know he can't get to me. I'm protected in the state. And it and it like you said it was working. Uh, Devin couldn't really get any clean punches, which was kind of like ah. Uh, so yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I and I know Derek James did not. And he said it after the fight too. He did not. He said, "What? It is what it is." But he definitely didn't get the green light for that. Yet again, <laughs> which shows Ryan Garcia does what he wants. Like yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. So you know, so, it's, it's it is what it is. In 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 Ryan's case, though, one thing I'm going to say is, you know, Devin tweeted he was like, you know, like, congrats to Ryan, but he would love to do it again where they both make weight. Eddie Hearn talks about Ryan looked like a middleweight in the ring. However. 
I don't think that's I don't think that's a fair claim because Devin Haney always looks pretty big after he re- rehydrates. So, you know, Mauricio Suleiman's on record of saying Devin Haney has rehydrated 24 pounds for a fight, right? Uh, something like that. 20, I think 24 was the number. But and in the Regis Pro Gray fight, he came in I think around 160, so he weighed more than Regis in that fight. So Devin Haney's on record of rehydrating to massive amounts above where you know the division he's fighting at, but. Now you have a guy who's pretty big and pretty strong himself, and now you don't have that size advantage. And then when that size advantage went away, it's like you kind of like folded. You know what I mean? So I know you, you mentioned it, Devin Haney, pretty high IQ. Someone who people you know respect his boxing skill. They said he's one of the purest boxers in the game. So do we still feel that way today, or do we think Devin Haney is for you know? To use the, the the popular terminology, do you think his weight bullying has gotten him pretty far? Uh, to be honest, I would have to. It might have to be the latter. I mean, at this point, I feel like I may have over exaggerated Devin Haney's IQ. Mm. Because it begs the question: If you know Ryan Garcia is a one trick pony, or has the most, is he has the most deadly hook? in the game right now and you know that's there right and, and this is we talked about this as well before where i was like it was easier for tank to take it away because he's a southpaw naturally <laughs> so when you're not when you're a southpaw you can kind of predict exactly. by framing once the once you don't feel the left hand anymore you kind of know it's either going to be an overhand drive or, or a left hook mm-hmm. right being an orthodox fighter you don't have that luxury but nevertheless there's other ways to kind of you know protect when that left hook is coming, right? Always keep and 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 this revealed one of Devin Haney's biggest bad habits, right? Him always keeping his right hand low right here mm-hmm. and, and looking to jab right here and not even picking it up to catch the left hook. Mm-hmm. He should have, I feel like he should have prepared a lot better. Keep the right. hand here every time, even when you're jabbing, boom, and seeing it coming. I was just shocked by the fact that he couldn't adjust. Yeah. He couldn't even adjust after that first left hook. He got buckled with. And he said they prepared for it. So could it have been I something? Know. Could it have been something minor in the ring that we wasn't seeing that Ryan was doing to really pre- prevent nah, that? Absolutely not. I think the only thing you can uh, you can say is Ryan's speed, right? But mm-hmm. after him getting buckled with the with the first left hook, he should have known. Okay, he's fast. Let me kind of anticipate this left hook and it's not like ryan got faster as the fight went on if anything he's gotten slower because he's exhausting himself a bit more now yes your reaction time may not be the same in, in the first couple rounds and late in the fight but for you to get when you got dropped that was completely on you like you then your defense wasn't really there and then when ryan was throwing flurries those flurries is getting through yeah. so as a defensive t- 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 tactician is, is, is Devin haney's defense really what it's cracked up to be we got to really sit and, and, and answer those questions, right? Yep. So, yep. Um, so in, in, in Ryan's case, when you talk about, you know, those flurries, we didn't see them very, very often. And then, but I know, yes, Ryan's most known for that left hook, but I go back to the Javier Fortuna fight. I know Ryan can throw different kind of punches. I know he can throw them in combos. We didn't really see it last night. So I wonder in his head, did he just... After that first left hook, he was like, I know this is the punch to get this guy. Because I always felt like, man, if the right comes behind that hook or if he throws a combination, it felt like Devin was not only going out, like going down, but going to sleep. You going know what I'm saying? Sleep. That, that, that's yeah. what it felt like. But, but I never, but it could be his conditioning. You made a point that, you know, about his conditioning. It could be his condition that prevented him from throwing some of those different punches that we've seen Ryan throw. But it's like, he, he didn't need it. He didn't need it. Yeah. Yeah, clearly, clearly didn't, you know. And then, uh, of course, one of the judges on cocaine or True. meth scored it a draw, which was uh, beyond ridiculous. And I was worried it was going to rob Ryan. Yep. Um, but, yep. you know, he ended up winning. Not yep. for the title, yep. of course, but you know, he ended up winning nonetheless. But, but as he says, the, you know, the belts don't pay the bills. So right now, Ryan's the people's champ, right? And if, if his, you know what I'm saying, if what he's most concerned about is making money and not the belts, then this is a win for him regardless. I mean, yes, he won, but I'm saying if he doesn't care about, you know what I'm saying? He said his body body physically can't get below 143. He said if you look at it, he's never fought below 143, but that's not true because the Fortuna fight was at 140, but since then, he has uh, only the tank fight, right, that he's fought below, but 
the Duarte fight was like at 143. Mm -hmm. And he's saying he needs to move up to welterweight. He even spoke about fighting Fundora at 54. So I don't think the Fundora thing is the next fight for him. But I'm guessing he feels like, all right, you know what? No, I really can't make this weight. But it's crazy because even when he was going to fight Tank, I was like, yo, you know, the weight made such a big difference because Ryan is strong at 40. Ryan is right. strong at 40. Like, I've seen that, right? So at 43, it's not a weight division, but, you know, was it yeah. the smartest move? Like, is Ryan a evil genius, right? Did did him <laughs> saying, let me not kill myself to get to 40, keep this strength at 43, you know, not really damage my body. Was that ultimately the deciding factor of him coming in so strong and looking the way he looked on fight night? Not taking the extra yeah, mile to lose those last three pounds and just saying right. whatever. Yeah, and, and, and maybe I, I it may have had. I think it, it has an impact. It's just a matter of just how much of an impact, right? Whether it's anywhere from ten percent or you, you know, because mm. we know Devin Haney tried to kill himself, and you pointed this out too, where Devin Haney looked, you know, he's a bit sunken in, uh, looked like he struggled to make weight, mm -hmm. and um, we don't know if that played a role in his performance. Um, but nevertheless, I think even if it did, he still had the repertoire in the toolbox to win that fight. It's just he just didn't execute it properly. Yep, yep, yep. And then, like I said, I know to lose the weight, it takes a toll. But on fight night, he was rehydrated, right? It wasn't those skinny cheeks anymore in his face where it's like, yeah. okay, you can kind of see the bone. Like, he, he was rehydrated. So it was like him and Ryan, I mean, I would have loved to see them step on a scale before the fight. They had to have been in ballpark of weighing what one another weighed. You know what I mean? Yep. I don't. I don't think Ryan has a massive size advantage as yeah. Eddie Hearn is trying to make a team. Um, <laughs> in fact, Eddie Hearn is so. I think Eddie Hearn is so shook by Ryan Garcia right now. He's like, man, fight boots. I don't know if you caught <laughs> that. He's, he said, yeah. He's like, yeah. I, I think it's Ryan crazy. said. Ryan said he beat Luke Campbell. Now he beat Devin Haney. Who else you got? And then Eddie Hearn was like, Jerron Ennis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ryan said he had good, though. But, yeah, but right. never, yeah, we, we, we got to see what's next for Ryan, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, in the vein of what's next, what do you think is next for Devin? Because I don't think Devin was looking to grant Ryan a rematch if he won this fight. So I don't necessarily know that Ryan's about to pay him the favor of doing a rematch. Ryan doesn't care about the belt, so he's not going to say, oh, let me get back to 140 so I can win the belt against you this time. So for mm -hmm. Devin Haney, still being the champion, but coming off a loss, how, like, what's next? What does he have to do? Should he take a tune-up to, to you know, come back yeah. from this fight? Or does he have to jump into a massive fight to say, hey, I got to vindicate that I'm still the champion after a loss? I think he's going to take a, him and his team is definitely going to take a tune-up after this, for sure. Okay. They're definitely going to take a tune-up. I think it just kind of leveled their expectations and their mentality, especially with their perception of who Ryan is. Now they're like, oh, shit. Like, we may – we're probably not as great as we thought we were. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think uh, – and I think it might be the best choice for them, you know, just yeah. to kind of hone in on clearly certain areas of improvement that they need to, you know, and making certain necessary adjustments um, and kind of just start from the drawing board, take a tune-up, and then – move on and allows him to recover also right um because he took some punishment there i don't know if he broke his jaw in that fight i'm not sure what happened but yeah he, he looked kind of beat up there he said his jaw is not broken but in my opinion i think he has to i think he has to it's gonna be hard right in his next fight i think he has to unify the belts i you think I, so i think he has to because i which option which uh where would he go to unify tio matias who, who, where would he go i'm gonna say Cruz. Probably Isaac Cruz is maybe the best option. Not that not that it's the easiest, but I'm just thinking of stylistically. Can he, can he maybe you know what Pitbull wants to do? Can he use the jab to keep Pitbull away and get back to that that classic Devin Haney style of you know jab and clinch to you know kind of like slow Pitbull mm -hmm. down? I think that may be the the best bet. But from a guy who is you know, he might say he doesn't care, but he cared about people calling him an email champion. He he cared about that all those years. And did he go out and win the rest of the belts? Yes, he did. Credit to him. But now to lose to Ryan, but because they said Ryan didn't make weight, Ryan can't win the belt. 
it's gonna be another situation of people clowning him like you got another belt you don't you're not even supposed to have so i think he has to just get in front of it and go unify the belts and be like all right you know what i beat another champion and i i think that's what he has to do okay okay okay, okay. yeah and, but I, i'm thinking pitbull is the thing is pitbull's a big puncher but Tio is a big puncher, and Tio's good if you're coming towards him. So Devin tries to walk him down. Tio's likely to land some of those big punches, and you know what will happen there. And I also think the pressure of Matias is just hard to do in your next fight. You know, very strong guy who's just going to be in your face all, all night. So I think perhaps the Pitbull Cruz fight. Not saying Pitbull's a walkthrough or that Devin's going to win that fight. Just saying, yeah, that's probably the best option. Yeah. Hundred percent. Okay. 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 That's 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 a good point. So, yeah. Um, would be interested to hear from Bill Haney. I'm gonna actually check on the net. I haven't heard much from him, but would be actually interested to hear from Bill Haney. Um, before we wrap, a couple quick points, couple quick takeaways in terms of Derek James. I heard them asking Derek James. Someone tried to slip the Errol Spence question in, and Derek James said, "No, nah, we're not talking about that." He said, "You know, like that. That's just personal matters." So I think that kind of confirms, yes, something is happening, right? If it yep. wasn't already confirmed. And but he Derek James also said people were talking about him being critiqued, you know, like as if he wasn't that good of a trainer. He was like, yeah, you know, I get it. But he was like, for the last 10 years, who's been really running this stuff like my fighters? And the first person he said was Errol. Then he Mm -hmm. said Jermel. Then he said um, he mentioned two other people. Did he mention? I don't think he mentioned Ryan. I think he said he may have said Ryan, but he also said Anthony Joshua. Um, Mm -hmm. But. I mean, maybe he would just be delusional not to mention Errol, but if if it was completely as bad as people said, then maybe he just wouldn't mention Errol's name at all. What do you think about that when he said, you know, the last 10 years, my guy's been running uh, stuff, and the first person he says is Errol. Errol. I know. I think it's just him being truthful. Regardless okay. of how he feel, that's just him being yeah. truthful because obviously, come on, you can't avoid Errol Spence, bro. Like, that's... That's the guy. Like that was the guy for the last ten years. Like so, I think it'd have been too blatantly obvious. Even if he did throw some type of way, he doesn't mention Errol. It's kind of like, ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Your name is essentially tied to Errol in a way, right? Yes. So it's kind of like, yeah. So I just think it's just him being truthful, to be honest. Yep. And the last thing about Derek, because this video is getting long, so before we wrap, the last thing about Derek, they asked him about. He said because he said it was better. It would be better if Devin just got knocked out and not take the punishment that he took. Right. I'm getting, you know, a lot of people are going to start comparing this to like Arrow versus Terrence Crawford. Right. But what Derek said that stood out to me as well is he was like, he said, how old is Devin? He was like, they were like, oh, 25. He said, 25. He said, nah, he, he's, he's, he'll be all right. He was like, he's, he's still, he's still young. It's not like he's the first number he said is 33. Then he said 40. But Arrow was 33, just you know. So I I don't know, bro. Like I could be thinking yeah. too deep into nah, it. I don't think I don't think you're thinking too deep about that one. That was a good that's a good catch. Yeah. I don't know. I think he thought about Arrow when he when he thought about that. Yeah, yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I don't know. I really want to see what unfolds there. But like I said, this video is getting too long, man. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. Two cents short of a dollar. What a night. What a night.